what you're seeing in this network is to bring his word, his glory, his grace to the ends of the earth. Love World is touching the world, dedicated to showing the power of God to the nations. It's time we bring the power of God to America and the world back on the screen. Just lift your hands right where you are. Father, to you be the praise and the glory and the honor. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your wonderful presence, for your magnificent anointing that destroys every yoke. Thank you for it. Now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask for the next few minutes that you would grant us that we might speak as the oracles of God to the heart of the matter and to the center of the things which concern your people, for they are your inheritance in the earth. Grant us now a door of utterance in the Holy Ghost that we might make known the mystery of the gospel and speak boldly as we ought to speak. And we declare liberty and victory and the finished work of Jesus continue to manifest in hearts and lives in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, can you just say amen? Now right there in your home, clap your hands and give Jesus praise and honor. Pastor Benny, good night sir hallelujah Woo! wow it is rich and thick in the room I, I am going to obey the directive of the man of God and the spirit of God and I'm going to open the word of God so I want you to go quickly to Genesis 22 there's already uh, a mighty anointing here and the spirit of God is doing something uh, that I believe a part of my job tonight is just to call attention to and assist you, thank you Laren, and assist you in cooperating with and flowing in this anointing that has been released. Pastor Chris, we love you, sir, and appreciate you so much. Thank you once again for your faithfulness to our magnificent Lord and for your stewardship of the grace of God that's been committed to your trust and to Pastor Benny, who I love with all my heart and thank God for him. You know, he jokes with me a lot, but the one thing I've learned about Pastor Benny, if he jokes with you, then he loves you. <laughs> and I have... So been blessed just by being around him and the anointing on his life these many years. And to Bishop Payne, Dr. Avanzini, how we honor you, sir, Dr. Smalley. And to all of those men of God, Dr. Richard Roberts, who have shared this past week. I've been blessed by every single thing that has been said. I have been edified. I have been strengthened. And uh, I'm grateful to see what the Lord is going to do. Now, the Lord gave me an assignment when he sent me here, and I inquired of him what my part was to be. And he shared with me, as I have shared the last couple of sessions that I have had the privilege of ministering to you, I've been sharing on the, on the theme of getting to the place Jehovah Jireh, getting to the place Jehovah Jireh, understanding that Jehovah Jireh, uh, the Lord our provider, Jehovah Jireh is one of the covenant names, one of the redemptive names of God. And as Pastor Benny was just talking so uh, 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 magnificently and articulately uh, through the word about the covenant and, and how significant it is, for us to know that we are people of covenant and understand covenant, 
we must understand that God has covenant names. Jehovah Jireh is one of those covenant names. And, and the names of God, one of the reasons it's important to know the names of God is the names of God reveal God's nature, his character, and his authority. As a matter of fact, in the Greek language, the word name, the Greek word is onoma, it literally means nature, character, and authority. When the scripture says, whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus, it's not just telling you to do stuff and tack Jesus' name on the back of it. It is saying, whatever you do, do it in the nature of Jesus. Do it in the character of Jesus. Do it in the authority of Jesus of Jesus. When Peter looked at the man at the gate beautiful and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give unto you in the name of Jesus, what he was actually saying in the nature of Jesus, in the character of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus, get up and walk. Hallelujah. God has given us his nature. He has given us his character in the new creation. He has given us his authority. So Jehovah Jireh is one of the covenant names of God, and we do not negate that fact. We do not eradicate that fact, and we're not attempting with what we're sharing to change anyone's theology. It is a covenant name of God. But by revelation of the Scripture here in Genesis 22, as I was studying Dr. Avanzini some time ago, the Spirit of the Lord illuminated me to the fact and the reality that the Bible says that Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, Son, Jehovah Jireh is not only one of my covenant names. It is a place in me. It is a spiritual position, if you will, or a location. And I desire to bring my people to the place Jehovah Jireh. I desire for them to live in that place. Now, once again, uh, when we talk about the place Jehovah Jireh, it is important that we clarify, and I'm going to read the scripture here that brings the point to a specificity in just a moment. But when we talk about getting to the place, Jehovah Jireh, I want to say again that the moment you are born again, the moment you are, are, are born uh, again, born from above, made alive, the moment your sins are forgiven, the moment you are pardoned in the name of Jesus and you are placed in Christ Jesus in the new creation, you have arrived at the place, Jehovah Jireh. So if you are born again, you're in that place. But it is critical and significant that we, especially this church upon whom the ends of the ages have come, it is critical that we understand uh, that just because we are in a place positionally doesn't mean that we are experiencing the manifestations of that reality experientially. I've said it before, it bears repeating that with every redemptive aspect of the work of Christ Jesus, with every element of the new creation, there is both a legal and an experiential element to it. E.W. Kenyon called it legal and vital. There's a legal aspect of it and a vital aspect of it. The legal aspect of it has to do with what Christ Jesus has accomplished and done for us by his finished work, by his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his seating at the right hand of the Father. That's the legal part of it. But the vital part of it, the experiential part of it, has to do with what you and I act on in the earth so that God can reveal all that he has given us legally and we can experience it. Do you understand what I just said? If you do, then we're at a place where we can read. And so we're at Genesis 22 now and we're dealing with this incident where Abraham arrives at the place Jehovah Jireh. God has told him to sacrifice his son, his only son, Isaac. We'll get to that in just a moment. And when Abraham gets to the place that God has appointed, we'll pick up the narrative uh, right there. Look at verse number 9 in, of chapter 22. It says, then they came to the place of which God had told him. Everybody say that out loud, the place that God had told him. Say that, the place that God had told him. They came to the place that God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in the altar 
And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know, or literally, he said, now I can get involved. Now I can involve myself with you on another level. Now I know that you reverence me since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Let me stop right there and just point out something. Isaac was not Abraham's only son. He had had another son. His other son's name was Ishmael. But Isaac was the seed that God had promised, and Isaac was the seed that God wanted. Let me say something about you. Or let me say something to you. When God puts his finger on a seed, that's the only one he's interested in. <laughs> Some of you, God is going to speak to you in a few minutes about a seed, and nothing else will suffice. When God puts his hand on it, when God speaks about it, and he says, bring it to me, it's his. Did you know, did you know, uh, Bishop Payne, that the Lord showed me something years ago? He said, son, you know, the tithe is mine, but also the moment I ask you for an offering, that's mine too. Before you even give it, it's mine. The moment I ask for it, it's mine. I said, Lord, where is that? And he took me to where uh, he tells Moses to give the children of Israel instructions to bring him an offering. He says, bring me silver and gold and badger skins dyed red and all of these things to make the tabernacle. And then the next verse says, and when they bring my offering. In other words, God says, the moment I ask for it, it's mine. If you keep it, you've got my stuff. Hallelujah. The tithe is not the only thing that's God's, that, that's the Lord's. The offering is his too the moment he asks for it. That was for free. Watch this. We're going on. Watch this now. We, we got to get to the point. And he said, do not lay your hand on your son. Now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. We pointed out. The Bible says they're behind him, which means Abraham had either passed this place and not seen the ram or, and so his eyes were opened when he lifts up the offering that God asked him for or God put it there in response to this man's act of faith. So watch this. So Abraham saw a ram caught by the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son, and Abraham called the name of the place. There it is. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, or Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Now, one of the things we have pointed out in the last two sessions we had with you is God has already provided for Abraham before this time. He has already made Abram rich in response to Abraham walking with God. He has restored to Abraham things that were taken and things that were stolen from uh, his relative Lot. He has worked miracles by the hands of Abraham and by his prayers. So God has done a number of wonderful and supernatural things for Abraham as he has done for you, as he has done for me. But he was not yet at the place. He did not yet have the fullness of the revelation that God is his source and his provider of everything thing until this action was made. What does that tell me? It tells me that there is, Dr. Smalley, a seed. There is an action. There is an act of faith that causes a man or a woman who has walked with God to get to a place where God becomes their everything, where God becomes their source, where God becomes the source of all of their supply, not just money, but strength and favor and grace and influence, God becomes Jehovah Jireh. And Abraham sees it at the lifting of a seed. Now, let me say this very clearly before I go any further. The Spirit of the Lord arrested me and made me very much aware that during the time that we were together, 
as the man of God has called this season of praise a thought. The Spirit of the Lord said, I have made and set an appointment with many of my people. I'm going to bring them to the place Jehovah Jireh. They are going to get a revelation of Jehovah Jireh and they will never ever be the same. You say, Bishop McClendon, what happens when you get to the place Jehovah Jireh? Look at verse number 15. It says, then the angel of the Lord, I'm about to get to something here I want you to pay very cl close attention to. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time. Everybody say a second time. A second time. In other words, God wasn't done. That was done, but something else was coming. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. Because of this seed, because of this action of faith, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants, everybody said your descendants, your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Look at this, verse 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Why? Because you have obeyed my voice. Now, we talked about what, what, uh, what got Abraham to this place. A couple of things the Spirit of the Lord told me to share. First of all, was the act of separation. When God told him in Genesis 12, get away from your kindred, away from your family. And God then began to give Abraham instructions and reveal things to him that brought him to the place. The second thing we talked about was the action on revelation that God begins to give Abraham instructions. He tells him things that nobody else on earth has been told to do. He speaks to him about tithing. This is a completely new concept and God says it to Abraham and he acts on it. He gives him other instructions that I won't get into, like circumcision. Nobody had done that before he gives him the instruction uh, about calling things that be not as though they were when he changes Abram's name to Abraham and Sarai's name to Sarah. So God is revealing. God is unveiling principles. Everybody say principles. He is unveiling principles. He is unveiling principles principles that as Abraham acts on them, they are bringing him to the place, Jehovah Jireh. But now, this last element that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me to share with you, God has already begun doing in this meeting tonight. He's been doing it all week, and that is promotion. It is an action of elevation. See, when you come to the place Jehovah Jireh, God puts you in a place of promotion and a place of elevation. There is a promotion, and I have come to announce tonight that tonight is the night for promotion and elevation for some sons and daughters of God, for some ministries, for some churches that have been walking with God, but God is about to raise you to a whole new level of influence, of authority, of provision, and of grace. If you believe it, say amen. amen. I want you to understand that God does this. God is a God of promotion. He is a God of exaltation. And we can't do it. We can't do this for ourselves. We can't promote ourselves. We can't elevate ourselves. Only God can do it. And that's why when God is up to it, you and I need to know it and we need to cooperate with it because you don't want to miss a season of divine promotion. You do not want to miss a season of divine elevation. And as Pastor Benny was sharing tonight about the things that are coming upon the earth, the things that Jesus prophesied, the things that the book of Revelation tell us that I was saying today are being set up right now for, to a place where the Bible says when the man of sin who embodies the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation 13, 8, when he manifests, he says that mark that is going to be given is so that no man can be able to buy or sell a 
unless they have the mark. But before that happens, God is going to bring a people to the place, Jehovah Jireh, where they are not dependent on the world system, not dependent on government. And if everything shut down, they know that they know that they know they will not miss a meal. They will not have a lack of finance and everything they need will be supplied. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God does this. Somebody say God does this. God, God does this. The Bible says in the psalm, it says promotion. The King James says promotion. The New King James says exaltation comes not from the east or from the west or from the south. It comes from the Lord. It's the Lord who does it. I don't know how many times I've seen people trying to elevate themselves, trying to push themselves into certain environments or in certain streams. But can I tell you, when God elevates you, when God promotes you, he opens doors that no one can shut, and he shuts doors that no one can open. Go with me very quickly to Exodus chapter 11, verse 3. I want you to see that this is something God does, and I want you to see it's something that he does for individuals. Look at Exodus chapter 11 and verse number 3. This was when Moses was uh, manifesting this final, uh, this final wonder that was to bring the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. Look at Exodus 11 and verse number 3. It says, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, watch this, moreover, the man Moses, everybody say the man Moses, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. What happened that night? God promoted Moses. He elevated Moses. He put favor on Moses to the point that even unbelievers recognized it. Yeah, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God is going to put such favor, such grace, such influence on his church, on his sons and his daughters who are acting on his word and believing his word that even the unbeliever will be able to look at you and say there is something on that man, something on that woman. I don't know about you. I want to be a candidate. How about it? Amen. Watch this. Go to Joshua Verse number 3 and, uh, I'm sorry, Joshua chapter number 3 and verse number 7. Are you tracking me, beloved? Yeah. Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 7. It says, and the Lord said to Joshua, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you. In the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, I shall be with you. In other words, God is telling Joshua, I'm about to do something for you, son. You can't do it on your own, but I'm going to do it. And when I do it, everybody's going to know that the God of Moses is your God. I don't know about you, but I am looking for the God of those men of old and women of old to manifest in these last days. And in order for that to happen, God is going to have to promote and exalt some men and women who are faithful to walk in dimensions of influence. I want you to get this. This even happened for Jesus. Look at Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2 in verse number 5. Somebody say out loud, God does this. Say it again, God does this. God exalts. God promotes. Yeah. It really is something when you understand this about even our wonderful Lord Jesus. When you understand that when he operated in the earth, in his earthly ministry, he is the son of God, but he is operating in the earth as the son of man. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. He is the son of God, but in the earth, he is operating in his earthly ministry. He is operating as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost. And that is why oftentimes you will see in the beginning of his ministry. I used to wonder about this until I asked the Lord about it as I was reading Dr. Avanzini one day. Uh, where Jesus would come into uh, uh, synagogues or he would come 
into places. And the Bible says the demons would cry out. And they say, uh, have you come for, to torment us before our time? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. And the Bible says Jesus would say to them, uh, hold your peace and come out of them. The Bible says he would rebuke them. The word rebuke means to say, stop it, that's enough. And I would wonder, God, why didn't you want them saying, you're the son of God? He, he said, because I wasn't casting them out as the son of God. I was casting them out as the son of man. I was casting them out as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost. And even though I was the son of God, when they said I was doing it as the son of God, they were lying. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. Now, why is that important? Because if he was doing it only as the son of God, it was something only he could do. But if he was doing it as the son of man, it's something that every blood-bought child of God who's anointed with the Holy Ghost can do. He was literally operating in the authority of Adam. That's why he calls himself the son of man. So watch this. It is interesting when you understand that Jesus... Even Jesus, though he is the son of God, the Bible says he takes off his glory and condescends to men of lowly estate. But look at Philippians chapter number 2, and don't miss the point. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. And taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, or because of this, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every. In other words, it was what Jesus lifted before the Lord, the offering of himself that he lifted that caused even him to be promoted to the place that God ultimately ordained him to sit. And now the Bible says that there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that he now is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. Why? Because God exalted him in response to the lifting of a seed himself that he released to God. Are you still there? And so now we go back to Abram and I'm bringing this to a close. The Bible declares that when Abram lifts this seed, look at what God says and don't miss it. Look at what is articulated and don't miss what is said. Notice verse 15 and it says the angel of the Lord called to Abram Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. Say that out loud after me. Because you have done this thing. Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as uh, as the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Now write this down because I, I, I don't know that I'll have another opportunity to share with you, and i got to get this to you. Number one, Jehovah Jireh, the place Jehovah Jireh is a place of faith. It is a place of believing and corresponding action. The Bible says Abraham, our father, found this out, Romans 4. It says, what has Abraham, our father, found? If you go further down, it said he found out that it was by faith that it might be of grace so that the promise could be sure to all the seed. Oh, my goodness. In other words, he had to act on the word that God gave him. When God told him to lift that seed, to release Isaac to him, Abraham had to believe that and he had to act on that word. He had to act 
on that revelation. You do not get to the place, Jehovah Jireh, unless you learn how to walk by faith. And let me say it very clearly. Believing by itself is not faith. Faith is not faith until it can be seen or heard. I'm going to say that again. Faith is not faith until it can be seen or heard. A lot of people say, I believe God. I believe God. Well, James tells us the demons believe. You didn't hear what I just said. The demons believe. He says, but do you not know, oh foolish man. I didn't call you foolish. I'm quoting scripture. Do you not know, oh foolish man, that faith, faith, the word, the Greek word there is pistis, without works. The Greek word there is ergon, a corresponding action. So faith, a conviction or a persuasion without a corresponding action is dead. You say, you believe God will supply, but where is your action? Of faith. Wow. You say, Bishop McClendon, that sounds good, but I need a little more evidence. You remember in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, when those men tear the roof off the place and let down that man in the midst that Jesus healed. The Bible says, and Jesus seeing their faith. See, faith is something Jesus can see. It's not faith until it can be seen or heard. That is why there are some people who sit in church, who sit under the same word, under the same anointing, who feel the same moving of the Spirit of God, but they never act on what God says to them, and they are never changed. And then there is someone else that when they hear the voice of God, they act on it, and God promotes, and God blesses, and God breaks through, and God works miracles. What is the difference? One person is believing Another one is walking by faith. Did you get what I just said? God said to Abraham, watch this. Not because you believed me, because you have done this thing. Ah, I want you to get it. Because you have done this thing. I I imagine, Pastor Benny, the confusion that had to be going through Abraham's mind when he is taking his son, the very son that God said he was going to use to bless the entire earth, the very son that God promised him, the very son that God said, in Isaac shall your seed be called. And God says, sacrifice him. Give the precious seed. Give the thing that you have put all your hopes and dreams on. Give the thing that you've been saving. Give the thing that you've been preserving. Give that and release it. You know what? Let me show you something that's powerful that the Spirit of the Lord showed me. One of the reasons that Abraham was able to release that seed and give it to God at his word. And I have learned this. Please, somebody hear this. That when you know the voice of the Lord... You don't have to fully understand the instructions. I'm going to say that again. When you know the voice of the Lord, you don't have to fully understand. He said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Not not they understand everything I tell them, but they know my voice. And they follow me. There are some of you, in the next few moments, the Spirit of God is going to speak to you to lift something to him. And that seed is going to be a seed of exaltation. It's going to be a seed of promotion. It's going to be a seed that's going to change things in your life. You may not understand how it's all going to happen. But when you know the voice, you don't have to understand how it's going to work out. All you got to do is act on Notice what the Bible declares here. Let me give you this second thing, that Jehovah Jireh, the place Jehovah Jireh, is a place of supernatural vision. Go to Hebrews 11 real quickly. I want you to see something. I'm almost done. I really am. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 17. Man, this is powerful when you get it, when you understand it. Hebrews 11, verse number 17, it says this, By faith Abraham, when he was tested... Offered up Isaac, watch this, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son 
of whom it was said, in Isaac shall your seed be called. Watch this, concluding that God was able to raise him up from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense. What does that mean, Bishop McClendon? It means this, watch this, that Abraham had his eyes on the harvest already, not the seed. No, you missed what I just said. He had his eyes. On, I want you to get this. The Bible says that Abraham was ready to release this seed, Isaac, because he had concluded that God was able to raise him from the dead. He had already seen Bishop Payne. If God is telling me to do this, watch this, and he has made me a promise, then he's going to raise this boy back up. There's going to be something. What is that? That is supernatural vision. That is him seeing beyond the natural, seeing beyond the natural realm. Why? Because he's got his eyes on God's promise and not on his offering. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. When God speaks to you and I about a seed, so many of us have our eyes on the seed and not on the harvest. So many of us have our eyes on what we're releasing and not what we're getting back. I have learned this. This is why, and Dr. Avanzini was talking about this reward system that is in the scripture. Because God says himself, he that comes to me must believe that I am and that I am a rewarder. I want you to get this. God knows that if you don't believe there's a reward, you'll stop coming. He knows if you don't understand that he is a rewarder of the one who sows seed, you'll stop coming. Oh, but when you get to the place, Jehovah Jireh, you understand you can't release a seed and there not be a harvest on its way. You can't sow something and something supernatural come back to you. And may I testify to you that many times the seed you sow comes back to you in so many different ways that you can't even imagine how it's coming back. I've sown financial seed and gotten the favor harvest. I've sown financial seed and gotten a things being added to me harvest. I've sown financial seed and gotten an open door harvest. I've sown financial seed and gotten a closed door harvest. I've sown financial seed and gotten an enemy's fleeing before me seven ways seed harvest. I've sown financially. Why? Because if you study your Bible, 1 Corinthians 15 tells you that when you sow a seed, God gives it a body at, that pleases him. Did you hear what I just said? God knows what you and I need. Pastor Benny said it uh, just a few moments ago. He said favor is one of the greatest things that a man or woman of God can ever receive. It's better than money. And I was meditating in that scripture where the scripture says that loving favor is better than silver and gold. And God said to me, he said, son, if you walk with me, I'll teach you how to spend favor like money. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. He said, I'll teach you how to spend favor like money. What does it look like to spend favor? It is to go in with your head held high and go into a place where everybody thinks you're the underdog, but you don't think you're the underdog. You think you're the head only and not the tail. You think you're above only and not beneath. You think that the God who is leading you will do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask for. Hallelujah. There is somebody listening to me tonight. You're going to sow a financial seed, but God is going to give you a favor harvest. And people who don't like you are going to bless you. And people who can't stand you are going to pay off your bills. And people who didn't want to do you any good are going to come and apologize to you. And say, so you know what? God's hand is on your life. Hallelujah. I'm almost done with this. Glory to God forever. Watch this now. Watch it. It's a place of supernatural vision. It's a place of continually hearing God. 
I cannot stress this enough. When you sow and release the precious seed, when you sow and release the seed that God asks you for, when you sow and release that seed at that moment that God has ordained, something supernatural happens in the realm of the Spirit. Your hearing goes to another level. Your hearing goes to another level. You say, Bishop McClendon, what do you mean? I want you to get this, children. God, God, the God of heaven, the God of earth, told Abraham, slay your son. Abraham, Elaborashanda, is there with his hand lifted and his knife ready to slay the seed that God promised him. And as he is getting ready to come down with the knife, he hears God speak to him again. What is this now? This is continuous hearing and revelation. I said it the other night. Many Christians would have killed Isaac because God said so. But man does not live by what God has said. Man lives by every word that proceedeth, 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 proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You heard God yesterday, but yesterday's instruction may not be sufficient for today's battle. You heard God last week, but last week's instruction may not be the one you need to defeat the enemy, the adversary today. But when you get to the place, Jehovah Jireh, when you lift that seed, God will continually speak to you. And even if you are about to put your foot down in the wrong place, he'll direct it and put it in the right place. Why? Because you are a worshiper of the God who is Jehovah Jireh. I'm finished with this. Lay your hands upon yourself and let me minister this thing to you. I want you to see something here as I close. And God said to me, Make sure you tell my people this. God says to Abram, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, you know, because you gave the seed I asked you for in the appointed time at the appointed place that I had ordained. Watch it. Blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. Somebody said your descendants. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates, the gate of their enemies. Watch this. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I need you to lay your hands upon yourself because the Spirit of God is going to have to open your ears for you to get this. And I believe your ears are open but I need you to hear me. When Abraham lifted this seed, when Abraham lifted this seed, God exalts Abraham and positions him in a place where he now becomes a man of spiritual paternity. He becomes a father. He said, your descendants are going to possess the gate of their enemy. You are going to generate now and produce in such a way that all the battles you win now will not be yours. They'll be your descendants. They'll be your offspring. It'll be what you generate. In other words, please hear me. The seed that Abraham lifted at the appointed time, the designated seed he lifted at the appointed time, watch this, caused Abraham from that moment to become in the earth the CEO of his own destiny. He was no longer at the hands, no longer at the mercy of anybody else. God says something now is going to come from you that's going to change everything around you. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know I'm sent to somebody. There are some men and women that God through the seed you're getting ready to sow in just a few moments is going to take you out of the hands of your enemies, out of the hands of your adversaries. Men and women who thought they had 
authority and control and determining and determining factors over you are not going to be able to do anything with you because God is going to now cause something that you generate, something that you manifest to be the key that causes your prosperity, your blessing, and your future. Lay your hands upon yourself. I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you, ma'am. Abraham lifted a seed that God instructed him to lift at a moment God had designed in a place that God had ordained and it changed everything about him and what he generates. The 112th Psalm talks about the man or woman that honors God and it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. That doesn't just mean your children. It includes them. But it doesn't just mean your children. It means whatever you generate, whatever comes out of your spirit, whatever dream, whatever vision, whatever idea God has given you, when it comes out, it's coming out blessed. Did you hear what I just said? There are those of you that have dream, vision, business, concepts, inspirations of God, and God is bringing you now to the place, Jehovah Jireh, where your future and your prosperity is in no one's hands but God's. I'm, I'm talking to you. There are many of you that are listening to my voice right now. And as the Word of God has come to you, the Spirit of God has been bearing witness with your spirit that this is your moment, this is your time. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about a $1,000 seed tonight. I'm sowing a $10,000 seed into Love World. There are several people under the sound of my voice that God is bearing witness with your spirit about that. But I want you to hear me and hear me very clearly. Dr. Mike Smalley and I heard the very same word. And I am believing God. And he is believing God with me for at least 700 men and women to sow a $1,000 seed. Dr. Avanzini, there's something about a $1,000 seed that changes things. And God is speaking to many of you yes, to do it yes. right this moment. If that is you, sir, if that is you, ma'am, wherever you are around the world, and if you're in another nation, then you sow the equivalent of that in your currency. But whatever you do, do it now. Yes. Do it under the anointing. Now, now. Do it at the word of the Lord. There is a promotion and an exaltation that yes, God yes. is working in this moment. Now, I just want you to raise your hand as the choir comes to minister, as uh, whoever takes it from here, Dr. Avanzini is coming. I just want to pray. May I pray? I just want to pray. Just lift your hands right there. If you are one of those men or women that God is bearing witness with, I want you to go to the phone, 1-855-378-9993. You, uh, you can text give. You can go to the website. But however you do it, do it now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch forth our hands and we stretch forth our faith. We thank you for your word that has found its place in the hearts of your men and women. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that as this seed is lifted to you, yes. that men and women that you have ordained it for yes. experience promotion and exaltation. Yes. And you take them out of the hands of the adversary, out of the hands of yes. their enemies. And they now shall become the ones under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that determine their destiny, their future, as they get to the place, Jehovah Jireh, in the name yes. of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Now, if that is you, go to the phone right now. Dr. No, no. Avanzini, come Praise. quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My goodness, God is touching people right now. All over this viewing audience, people are getting a special word from God. I have just quick scripture I share with you at this moment. Some of you that are here, you need a quick miracle. Some of you, something has to happen quickly, quickly. But you know, sometimes we have these truths in God's Word, and our traditions hide them. They hide them from us. I want to talk to you from Psalms 119 and the 24th verse. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We've sung about that. We've danced around about that. But did you realize that this is a time that David needed money and he needed it right now? He needed it right now. 
David says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now. I beseech thee, O Lord. I beseech thee, send now prosperity. He needed a financial miracle right now. Now, we've been singing and dancing and clapping our hands about that, and we've been using it, and I've had a good time singing along with you. But God is talking about something serious here. David needs finances. He needs them right now. And he says, God, you're making this day, and before this day is done, I can have my need met. He says, this is the day you're making this day. You're making everything in it. He says, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. I send prosperity. How's this going to happen, Lord? Well, look at that 27th verse. Uh, the, the, Lord is the, uh, the Lord is he which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords even to the horns of the altar. David says, I need money right now. But if I'm going to have a, something happen in the financial realm, I've got to sow something. Bind the sacrifice on the altar right now because before this day is done, my God will put the finances in my hand that I, that I need. And he does not want us embarrassed. He does not want you embarrassed by not having the money when it's due. If you will right now plant that seed, go to the phone and say, I need a quick miracle. I've got to have some money and I've got to have it right now. David was in the same place. What did he do? Did he cry? Did he weep? Did he go to uh, uh, that, that pink slip? Did he take his pink slip in and try to borrow money on it? No, he says, I'm going to give an offering to God. I'm going to do something that will work. Child of God, it can happen before the sun sets. God can touch that problem in your life. Just share that again. Share that scripture again. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God says, I'm, I'm sad now, but before this day's over, I'm going to be glad. Save now. Listen, oh Lord, I beseech thee. Oh Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. And then he said. Yeah, he says, look, bind the sacrifice to the altar with cords. He said, I know that if I make a seed to God, he will bring me a harvest. That's very powerful. And he'll bring it very in the same, very strong. Yes, sir. We've been singing about that thing and dancing around with that thing, but I go to war with it when I need finances. I say, Lord, this day, this day, I can still have my, I can have my need met this day. I know some of you out there, you think it's coming apart. You feel it can't happen, but here it is right in the book. David, King David, he had a problem. He needed money. What did he do? Did he go to credit place? Did he go and get a short-term loan? No, he said, you can do this thing. It can, if God can do it in a, in a hundred years or in a day, he can do it in a day for you. Somebody that I'm talking to right now, I, uh, even uh, thank you, United States, someone in the United States, but all over the world, there are people all over the world that need money right now. And God says, you can do it. He says, David says, you can do it today. It, 24 hours, God, before the sun rises again, I can have this thing in my hand that I need. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now. I beseech thee, O Lord. I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. God, look, I'm binding that right now. I'm putting the sacrifice. I'm not asking you for a handout. I want a harvest. I don't... I never said that. That is awesome. I don't need a handout. That is awesome. I don't awesome. need a handout. That I need a awesome. harvest. It's time to go to the phone and say, yes, this is my seed. I don't need I'm a handout. I'm binding. I'm putting that sacrifice. <laughs> Send prosperity now, but I'm Ciao. binding the sacrifice. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the day which the Lord has made. I tell you, brother, <laughs> he's going to sow his seed. He said. Oh. That is a powerful, <laughs> you know, I've read that scripture many times, but <laughs> you really brought this powerful, <laughs> powerful revelation. <laughs> Send prosperity now, but I'm binding the sacrifice to the altar, even to the homes of the altar. You told me one time that you read the Bible backwards. Why? Why? My traditions came to me this way. 
When I back up through it, I see all the places where the tenses are wrong and where all these. <laughs> he told, years ago, he told me, he said, that's why you caught this verse before, yeah. because you was reading read it, it from the, oh, from the, other, the bottom up. If you read it down, then you're rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> the other way you put Ah, that was a good one. <laughs> Choir, are you going to sing a song? You sweet people keep calling. I love this. I just remembered your grandpa telling me this a long time ago. He said, have you ever tried to read the Bible backwards? <laughs> I said, no. I see, I see how you can get that revelation, brother. It's awesome. Okay, choir, you ready? And you sweet people, keep calling. A few more minutes to go. Wow, that was good. No other day. 